I am Mizzy Punzumela coming to you from BACR in San Rafael, California. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest, tobacco cessation expert, Anita Ranzetti, who is going to talk to us about loneliness and smoking in isolation. She is going to explain the issue and share resources that boost the odds of successfully quitting smoking or vaping. Isolation and its link to smoking and vaping is an issue that may affect anyone in our circle of close friends and family or people in our community. And we ought to know how we can reach out to those people. Our guest worked with a wonderful team in the Bay Area that is creating videos, running Zoom groups, and guiding adults and youth who want to quit smoking and vaping. Welcome to our program, Anita. Thanks, no Zipple. I'm glad to be here. So Anita, tell us, why is isolation an issue for people who smoke or vape? Well, isolation and loneliness have been found to cause many health issues, including depression, anxiety, and increased addictions. What do isolation or loneliness have to do with smoking and vaping? Well, the side effect of smoking or vaping is that you feel shunned especially to the health conscious county of Marin. Being judged makes you feel like you need to hide your smoking and vaping or avoid people like your friends who might criticize your smoking. It's very isolating and it's a vicious cycle. There's a recent study from the University of Bristol in England that I can share. Tell us more. Yeah, okay, um, I'll read a quote from the lead author of the study. We found evidence to suggest that loneliness leads to increased smoking, with people more likely to start smoking, to smoke more cigarettes, and be less likely to quit. There was evidence that being lonelier increased the likelihood of starting smoking, the number of cigarettes you smoke per day, and, and it actually decreases the likelihood of your being able to successfully quit. But I know lots of people who smoke and vape, especially now. Is it really that big of a deal if lonely people need their habits to get through tough times when they can't see their families and friends? Yes, it is. Leading tobacco research expert said, if lonely people are more likely to start smoking and find it harder to quit, they're more likely to suffer the harm caused by smoking. It's the leading cause of preventable death with many people suffering serious smoking-related illnesses, such as cancer, heart, and respiratory disease. This research highlights the need for smokers suffering from loneliness to be given support to stop, to improve not just their health and well-being, but also to reduce their loneliness. But how can you reduce smoking or vaping and loneliness? That seems tough, especially during shelter in place. Oh, well, I'm including a slide at the end of the video with lots of resources, no Zippo. To help someone tackle his or her loneliness, I recommend not only the California Quit Line counselors, but also groups like Nicotine Anonymous or online cessation groups from your medical provider. For those who vape, there are text programs, apps, and other kinds of support on the last slide of the video as well. That sounds helpful, but... What about when the pandemic ends? When COVID-19 is under control, face-to-face -face meetings with others can also help a person to quit and not feel so isolated. Many friendships are made in these groups since everyone can relate to each other. And of course, family and friends will be easier to connect with after the pandemic is gone and that will reduce feelings of loneliness. Thanks, Anita. Oh, and I've seen ads for the California Quit Line recently. They say the counselors help you set up a quit plan and get free nicotine patches. Does calling a quit line really make a difference though? Yeah, actually the studies show it does, Zippo. Quit line services such as 1-800-NO-BUTS and 1-844-8-NO-VAPE greatly increase the chances of quitting successfully. The U.S. Public Health Service found quitline counseling can more than double your chances of quitting 
And quitline counseling, if you add it with medication like patches or prescriptions for quitting, they can more than triple your chances of succeeding as quitting. So things like counseling through Kaiser or your other medical provider and group support, they all help make a big difference in the quitting success rates. I know some friends who tried to hide their smoking from me and it broke my heart when I could still smell the smoke on them. Would it be okay if I read the story from the secret smoker you sent to me to help people be less judgy about smoking and vaping? Yes, Nozippo, please do. And remember, secret smokers can successfully quit. I'll provide a link to four secret smoker quit stories in the description below. That's great. Now I'll read the story. My addiction grew worse and became harder and harder to control. For the last few years, I spent all the energy I had planning my smoking around my husband. I thought since I love him so much, I shouldn't subject him to it. Therefore, secrecy was a necessity. Out of love, of course. I thought smoking away from my hubby was a sacrifice I was making. See how nice I am? But now I see it for what it really was, a way to prevent him from having an opinion about it. I have fake headaches so I could stay at home from outings that would hinder my ability to smoke at least every hour. I have poo-pooed travel ideas because I knew it would be together too much for me to smoke successfully and keep it hidden. I am always running to the store for everyone for any reason in order to sneak to the gas station and buy cigarettes and then smoke in peace for a few minutes. I have avoided great friends for years and years because I didn't want my smoking habit to be discovered. No, Zippo, that's so sad. What you read really shows how easy it is to feel ashamed about smoking or vaping and self-isolate. And being condemned by smokers by the non-smokers saying you shouldn't smoke doesn't help a person to stop. The key is support that addresses not just the smoking or vaping, but the loneliness of hiding your addiction. That's very encouraging, Anita. And did the woman in the story I read quit? Yes, she did. She used the quit line and then she did online research and she made it through withdrawal. She was joyfully tobacco-free by the time she wrote her story. Anyway, this reinforces what we've seen in the field, that it's possible to get past the shame, as well as find the support to quit smoking and vaping, regardless of what is happening in the world. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks again for sharing your expertise about smoking and vaping in isolation, Anita, as well as how to help those who are isolated to quit. My pleasure, Zippo. Well, viewers, that's all we have time for today. Please review the resource slide that you will see next. Pause on it to write down the Quitline phone number or other info such as how to find Nicotine Anonymous meeting. Remember, if you're isolated and smoking or vaping, either secretly or openly, there is help for you. And it's never too late to enjoy the health benefits of quitting. This is Nozipo Vimela from PACR in San Rafael, California, signing off.